History is often filled with things that aren't very fun, and notable amongst those is disease. Sometimes it will end the reign of an important monarch, sometimes it will stop a war in its tracks, but every few centuries there's a major outbreak, a pandemic. And one of the most notable of these was the influenza outbreak of 1918, better known as the Spanish flu. So how did this pandemic play out? Well, first of all, it's important to note that there's no definitive answer on where this outbreak actually came from. Some say it started in a British Army field hospital in France because all those sick people next to each other was a breeding ground for disease. Some argue that it originated in southern China because the government there had reported a deadly flu there in 1917, and there are others that say it started in Kansas and American soldiers brought it with them to the Western Front. What we know for sure is that it definitely didn't start in Spain. So why is it called the Spanish flu then? Well, the reason is that during the First World War, both the Entente and Central Powers implemented strict censorship of the press. And this included suppressing the flu outbreak because authorities were concerned it would demoralise troops. Spain, however, was a neutral country and so had no censorship and its papers were free to discuss the outbreak of flu which had spread there from France. Also, given that the King of Spain himself got very sick, many people only knew about the deadly flu there and had no idea that it was spreading in their own countries, hence the name. So, to summarise the outbreak, the Spanish influenza pandemic infected 1 in 3 people globally and of those it killed roughly 10%. Most deaths came from the flu causing pneumonia. Fortunately though, pneumonia could easily be treated by antibiotics. Unfortunately, antibiotics hadn't been invented yet and so you simply had to hope for the best. In the end, the pandemic reached all corners of the world and killed about 40 to 50 million people globally in the space of a year. And to put this into perspective, World War I killed about 12 million people over the course of four years. So the Spanish flu came in three waves, and the first one hit in March to April of 1918. But this was the least deadly of all waves. By May or June though, the flu had largely disappeared, until it popped back up in France in late October and it was this second wave which was the big one. To put it into perspective, in six weeks the illness killed 400,000 people in the United States and 200,000 in Germany, and its victims were mostly young adults. Places like India were the hardest hit though, with the death toll there alone being over 10 million people in two months. And the third wave occurred around the beginning of 1919 and whilst also deadly, wasn't as bad as the previous. Over the course of two months, it killed 70,000 people in Britain and slightly more in Germany. After this though, the flu just simply, well, disappeared, leaving the world to pick up the pieces and return to a sense of normalcy. So how did nations try to stop it? Well, we'll look at Italy's attempt for the answer. The first outbreak barely affected the nation and soldiers on the front were only made mildly unwell. But it was the second wave which began in Sassano in September of 1918 that was the devastating one. When soldiers on the front started to die in droves, the government knew that strict measures had to be taken. The problem was that Italy wasn't a hugely developed nation at this point and so food was severely limited by the war effort and medical staff and equipment were prioritised for the army. In the end, as millions of people became unwell, combat medics were sent back and first year medical students were given control of entire hospitals. Travel between cities was limited, but ultimately this wasn't enough to stop its spread. The Italian government implemented numerous strategies. One, advice was given to people to wash their hands often, to isolate the sick and to reduce contact with their neighbours, which was difficult given that people had to queue for rations daily. The government conscripted prisoners of war to clean the streets, gave police officers face masks and reserved hospitals for only the very sick. It banned public gatherings, closed schools and barred hospital visitors. And it was this aspect, no church, no seeing sick relatives and no attending their funerals which caused a deep trauma in Italian society, reminiscent of the Black Death six centuries earlier. Like everywhere else, the last wave went as quick as the first one came and in Italy the flu killed 600,000 people in six months. Something many people wonder is that given how destructive the Spanish flu was, why isn't it better remembered and for that there are two reasons. The first was that it occurred towards the end of the First World War and so that event takes precedence. The second was that during this period pandemics were fairly common and people were used to cholera, typhoid plague and other diseases ravaging their communities. And combined with people being numb to so many young deaths in the war, much of the world had become, well, pretty used to it. Which is why the Spanish flu was always seen as a footnote to the First World War because to many people at the time, it was. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching with a special thanks to my patrons James Bizanet, John Lucid, A Man of Culture, Danny Maloney, Little Holiday, John Bizguez, Rob Waterhouse, Mo, James Castaneda, Aaron the White, Jordan Longley, Gustav Swan, Marcus Arsner, Rashid Ali, Spinning Three Plates, Filda Oink Oink, David Silverman, Maggie Pakskowski, Spencer Lightfoot, Lexi Schwinn, Kelly Moneymaker, Anthony Beckett, Robert Wetzel, Sky Chappelle, Marvin Cassow, Winston Kaywood, and Izzy?